All right, Heart of Business, how are we doing today? That was an awesome reaction. Thanks, Deb. It's early. Yeah, we've, we've all had our coffee, right? So uh, my week has been pretty crazy, actually. I actually started, uh, I had to go be at Lakeland at 4.30 in the morning to help with the teacher's benefit sign up. Um, so I'm, I'm at Starbucks, right, right as they open, and I have a five-gallon container of Starbucks coffee, and I have my nicest Egyptian cotton shirt on, right, like the dress shirt you wear when you're trying to impress somebody, light blue, right? And I take this five-gallon thing, and she says, hold it like this, right? So I pick it up and just splash right on top of me, 4.30 in the morning, coffee down my dress shirt. So I had a backup, right, because I just instinctively knew when you wear your dress best shirt, that's going to happen. Um, so that's how my week started out for my church. Um, but anyways, today we're here. We, we, most of you, if you remember from last week, right, we're having a mastermind series today. Um, a mastermind series is more of us just getting together to either solve problems, to come up with solutions, to come up with how we can do things better, right? Um, so traditionally, there's not like a subject. There's not like a thing that I'm going to present to you guys and say this is what we want to do, right? It's, it's kind of open air, open form right now. Um, so does anybody have anything on their mind or a subject that they thought of since we since we talked last week? I can, I can break the ice. Uh, it's not my, uh, it's not the first time I've mentioned this to the group, but uh, when I got started in my career as a financial advisor at Edward Jones back in 2003, I, their uh, business model was, well, uh, their business model and also the the instructions, I guess you could say, from Edward Jones Jr. was grab a stack of business, grab a stack of business cards, and go out and meet your neighbors. And so when I started there, they said you need to go knock on, you need to go talk to 25 neighbors a day, or you're fired. It's that simple. And uh, there's no, no fooling. They made sure you had 25 contacts in your computer every day. If you got 20, you had to make up the five the next day, or by the end of the week. So in Seattle, I knocked on 4,000 doors, and I, I collected uh, $40 million in assets under management in five years. And then we decided to leave Seattle for Colorado, so I went and door knocked another 4,000 doors in Loveland, Colorado, and built my business back to $40 million after five years. And then four years ago, we decided that Colorado turned into Seattle, so we decided to come here. It's prettier here anyway. Colorado's nice, but not so much the front range where it's all grassland and cornfields. So we're here, and as soon as we got here, COVID started. So I didn't want to knock on doors. Like, yeah, it was probably bad form. Give your knuckles a break. Yeah, and I, I kind of uh, rested on my prior successes. Business was good. I'm comfortable. The world's going crazy with COVID and lockdowns and stuff. I'm just going to take care of my clients. Well, four years later, I, you know, a few months ago, I came to the conclusion that I have like five clients in all of Idaho and I've got the rest of them scattered across the country. And I'm like, I'm, I'm 40, almost 49. Why not just do it one more time? So I bought 5,000 business cards and I just decided I did it twice. Why not do it again? And I want to be a force to be reckoned with right here in Coeur d'Alene. I want to be, you know, if you can be a household name, I'd like to be a household name. I mean, just because Pinkerton has a nice building doesn't mean I can't be better. So I just decided for all of you who are trying to build your business, I'm just going to go out and knock on doors. So, you know, I'm, I'm knocking on 10 to 20, talking to 10 to 20 people in my neighborhood every day, four days a week and just say hi. I live in the neighborhood. Just wanted to stop by and meet you. There's a lot of new homeowners around here and uh, I just want to let you know I'm a financial advisor here in Coeur d'Alene. Been doing that 23 years. And I usually find about one person a day who's definitely a really solid potential appointment. And that's the way it's always been. Just the numbers have always been that way. Go out and meet 20, you meet two. Go out and meet 10, you meet one. Not that the other nine or 19 are, in, are not any good. It's just that I usually find one or two who are like, yeah, you know, I would like to talk to you. Give you one example and then I'll stop uh, with my, my uh, testimonial. And that is last week I, 
I went up to the top of that hill in Hayden, Grandview Drive, that overlooks the entire valley, and I had to go to a friend's house. And while I was up there, I mean, I made the journey. I mean, I drove all the way up there. I might as well go see, you know, what's what's on the street. So I just parked the car and I walked down the street and I talked to 10 people. And one of them owned a timber company and a pine needle baling company in the Carolinas and they're nearing, they're at, at and near 60 and they wanted to get together. And then the week before that, I knocked on a door in my neighborhood and she said, I just said to my husband yesterday, I was looking for a financial advisor. And I can't believe you're standing on my doorstep. <laughs> and she, she said, you're really a really pleasure to talk to. And I went, yeah, let's, let's get together sometime. So I'm all saying this just because sometimes you just got to go out and get a comfortable pair of walking shoes and just go meet your neighbors. So if that's, conduct, if that's in line with your business model, it's fun and you're you have a service that people will need you just need to go find them yeah michael i have a question so um i definitely understood when you're in your neighborhood going and introducing yourself and saying hi i'm one of your neighbors but when you were in your friend's neighborhood did you have any reservations did you say hey i was visiting a friend and i'm in your neighborhood did you how did you break the ice with people that were not your neighbors yeah sometimes i kind of try to I do kind of mix that, I mean, think about different ways to say that. Some of the people, I said, hey, I was up here on business. Uh, I'm a financial advisor in Coeur d'Alene. I was up here on business. I just wanted to say hi. I figured I made the drive up here. I might as well go meet some people I've never met before. And I mean, that's 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 a way to do it. Um, if Or another way is just say, hey, you know, I mean, that's, that's one of the, either that or you can just say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm a business owner right here in Coeur d'Alene, I just want to say hi. Or um, a lot of times I will say I was in the area on business or I had a meeting um, here or like also if you, I legitimately have someone in the neighborhood who is a client and I can say, hey, I'm, I'm a financial advisor for some of your neighbors and I just wanted to stop and say hi because I've never met you before and Wanted to let you, you know, wanted to give you a business card and find out what you do. You know, I always, I always like to say, I wanted to find out what you do. Do you own a business? And that's, that's a real treat for me because being part of Heart of Business, it's like, oh, you do this, you do this. And I tell people, I, I know hundreds of businesses around here and I try to keep, I'm like a walking dir uh, directory of businesses. I tell people I'm a connector of people and I say, I'm a toolbox. Anything you need, I can probably figure out who does that. So, yeah, that's the answer to your question is um, if it is my neighborhood, which I'm going to spend the next year getting to know pretty much everybody in Coeur d'Alene Place, and there's a new development on the west end of Hanley, or the Arcaterra, on, yeah, it's not Enclave, but the Arcaterra neighborhood, hundreds of houses in there. So I'm just going to go and just meet them all. The most important thing is just to keep it simple and just like, all right, I'm, for my, in my brain, this is a block of people, houses. I can do that. I can, I can just check them all off. I can, I can do that. And then when I'm done with that, I'll go over here and do that one. And so um, that's just the way I've done it for so many years. And it works. So why not do it again? And I figure by... I don't know, 52, 53, 55. Do you have a map that you check off? Uh, basically, yeah. I have, a, I have a map attached to a list of everybody I've met. And that way I can drive by and go, oh, they're not on my list. And I'll go knock on that door and add them to the list and then reprint it at the end of every day or every week. And he's, so he's, he's got a electronic map, map but a physical I have a physical map and I have a Google Drive spreadsheet with everybody on it so if i don't have my paper map i'll just go to the spreadsheet and scroll down to the street and there and there it is um, so i've got it i like the paper it's just easier than looking at my phone or whatever i just flip okay let's see uh grandview drive here's all the people i haven't met yet and just bam um hit it and i'm also for those of you who ever decide to go that route you're going to find a lot of people you don't 
don't need you or you don't want to work with. And the most important thing is that you're, when you're doing this, you're screening the neighborhood. You're filtering all of, you're gold panning. You're getting rid of all the granite and just looking for the gold. And, and that's one of the joys of going out and doing that is like, all right, I talked to 10 people, but five of them, I, I never want to talk to ever again, <laughs> you know, because either they just don't fit my profile or I just didn't like them. I mean, there are people that are just plain weird and you're like, <laughs> but out of eight, out of here we are, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but out of 8,000 people, I've only had like five people literally just look at me and just shut the door in my face oh, and at yeah. the end of that yeah. I, at the end of those very few i walked away and i was like thank god i never have to talk to them again yeah. and i make a note do not go back yeah. and somebody once told me if that ever happens to you just be thankful you're not married to that person <laughs> so so anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I've tried social media marketing. I've spent thousands of dollars on it. And to all the marketing people, God bless you. It's just God gave me this strange gift of talking to strangers and actually enjoying it and coming home happier than when I started. And I like the challenge, but it also has produced insane results. I mean, I have a great life just built on door knocking and so i one of the things that gave me the ability to move here and to move to colorado is knowing that what i do and what i did worked so when i moved to colorado it was december i went out on a 14 degree day it was blowing snow in my face i had a, I had a scarf and long trench coat it was awful day and I just walked out the front door of my house, crunching through the snow with a stack of business cards. And I did it again. And all of that work is what I'm living on today. I just want to do it again because I want Coeur d'Alene to know who I am. And so I'm just going to go to all of the core neighborhoods first. And then I want to start going out down here south of Sherman by Tubbs Hill. That because those houses are selling for like a million dollars. So the stuff over by the golf course. So, Can I yeah. Can with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I, that's actually what I was going to say is that Mike kind of just volunteered himself for something a lot bigger than he knows. Yeah, so, so <laughs> I... We're all going to come with you on Yeah, we're going to come Well, I, 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 I actually I, really truly think that it might be a good idea to have Mike kind of almost lead us in a part of business walkathon, right? Yeah. Where one of these, you know, Saturdays or something like that, we'll just go out for two or three hours. Should we go caroling at Christmas? Yeah. Five or ten of us go out and we see how Mike does it and we yeah. go together and we introduce we ourselves learn. hey, this is the heart of business committee, right? Yeah. We're out here, we're businesses, local business owners looking to meet people. Um, you know, we'll let Mike do all the talking and hand out his business card. Um, so we'll all dress up. Sure all the businesses on a postcard. Nicholas can make them up for us and hand one postcard over. And the way I and the way I picture Mike's house, right, is I just picture he has this room with a bo with a board just like this, right, and a map, and it's got everybody's photo on it, right? Strings going over, you know, different places, right? I, so I have a Christmas carol that we can all sing. We'll go around and go, Tis the season to make money. Fa la 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 la. So that'll be our, that'll be our uh, song. We'll go around, we'll all dress up like Scrooge and, 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 and big stovepipe hats and stuff and, and beautiful dresses. I have a question. Yes. Do, have you found a certain uh, chunk of time during any oh, given day yeah. where Um, it is, it is kind of, um, my preferred time. The answer is no, it doesn't matter. Um, but it's like fishing in a bucket if you go out between three and five because people start coming home from work. Um, but if you're out at 11 o'clock in the morning, you'll get retirees and housewives. But at three o'clock, four o'clock, garage is open, garage is open, garage is open, garage is open. It's like, you can just drive around and go, oh, garage is open. 
Run up, knock on the door, say hi. Next house, garage is open. Run up, knock on the door. You can get, I mean, I, I did six in 45 minutes the other day, a couple days ago. And, you know, five and, if, uh, five and three. if somebody doesn't answer, do you leave a card or you just come back another time? Um, I usually leave a card, but not <laughs> just the card. I'll leave a newsletter or a magazine or something like that. Something... Um, just so that they've got the card. Um, have you ever run into issues with I've, solicitation laws, or have you ever even have you ever even gone out and like you know Dalton Gardens for instance? Uh, they they say if you want to knock on doors at Dalton Gardens, right, that you have to have their hundred dollar solicitor's license. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> but is that is that anything that you've ever worried about? No. <laughs> Thankfully, I've never been in a place that <laughs> that had door knocking restrictions. I guess you could also bypass that by the fact that when I go out, I'm not soliciting anything. I will not, I will not sell anything out of the door. Um, I just won't. I'm just stopping by to say hi. And that's what I say to everybody. I say, hey, I live in the neighborhood. I just stopped by to say hi. I wanted to meet you. Uh, as opposed to wanting to sell them a, a bond or a stock on a doorstep. And that's the thing is Edward Jones back in 2003 and earlier and around that time frame, talk to 25 people, ask open-ended questions, always ask for the order. I'm like, screw that, you know? You just met this person. You're gonna try to pin them to the wall with a bond sale? Like, I did sometimes just because I had to under pressure because the management was watching, but People don't want to be sold. They want, you know the deal. We, we're all in this. I just want to make friends, and I want to talk to all these people, like five or six or seven or ten times or whatever, and I want them to know who Michael Christensen is. And then just by that, they'll be like, hey, I just changed jobs, and you know, I, I still have your card. I want to give you a call. I have a 401K. I need to move over. And you're like, and for me, I find that it takes about six months before those contacts start to actually open up accounts. I, I learned early on that if I didn't door knock in the winter, I starved to death in the summer because back at Edward Jones, I was a lot of commission-based business and it was pretty spot on because if you didn't have a pipeline full by, you know, during winter, your summer was pretty tough. But are you saying that uh, you have to keep going back same person a half a dozen times or are you saying off of the one time meeting them possibly six months later they get a hold of you? I, you also got to take into account that he's he's talking business specific right so that's something that is normal for me and would probably be normal for Rebecca right but I don't think that that would be normal if um, if you know you had a bakery right yeah. or something yeah. like that you know yeah. or if you were selling marriages yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we, when, when I was doing life insurance, I was under a gentleman named Ed Milet. Some of you may have heard of him. He sold Copper Rock out here for, what was it, $23 million a year ago. That was one of his six houses. His best friend's Tony Robbins. So he travels the world doing motivational seminars. And what he told us is for every 10 people, you'll get one yes, but there's never a no. Those nine people are not at this moment yeah always keep them in your book and what we would do is like you said we aren't selling them we had a business meeting every week and we would ask them is your family prepared for finances are you covered you know how's your health of your loved ones if you're interested we have a meeting on Tuesday night please come down and join us and we'd like to talk to you more but we also you know your subway ordering a sandwich it wasn't just doors for us it was everywhere you go, you would strike up. And we did lists of 25 that we had to turn in. And it was, like you said, instead of getting defeated by people that are like, I'm not interested, just remember, you've planted a seed just like a plant. And in time, something may change in their life and it will grow into, hey, I remember this person. They were really nice, charismatic. Let me reach back out and build contacts. And no is never no. No is not at this moment in my lifetime is what he thought us to look at. Yeah, it's funny that you said that because on my notes, when I, when I write down my notes in the system, I, I put N-I, ATM, not interested at the moment. And that's, that's just what I put. But if, if they're 
if I just truly did not like this person because they were just weird, I'll just put don't go back, rude, or kind of weird, or whatever. You know, and I'll code them red. So red, yellow, green, um, that was an Edward Jones, you know, coding mechanism that we had back in the day. And... Um, so I have a question. Yeah. So you're doing all of this because your, like, great goal, like, Judy calls it the big, hairy, audacious goal. That's your BHAG. Your BHAG is you want to be known in the area. So you're doing this door-to-door -door and stuff like that, but when are you finding time to work? Good question. So my, my office hour time is from basically 6.30 in the morning till 1 because 1 o'clock is when the stock market closes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. After that, I'm done placing trades. I'm, that's all. My life does not change for after 1 o'clock. I mean, stocks are closed. Mm -hmm. Nothing really changes. So, so I basically do my financial practice work my appointments are usually scheduled for 10 in the morning 11 in the morning whatever if i can if i can schedule them they're always in the morning if they have to be in the afternoon i'll do it that's fine clients take priority prospects take priority so anything anything that is business building can certainly be in the afternoon i don't have a problem with that and some people use a point system or whatever and as far as activities go well a lot of people say well if you have an appointment during door knocking hours consider the appointment five contacts or something like that oh okay but to answer your question yeah it's just after one o'clock stocks are closed which is a wonderful thing i love the west coast yes. because when i go to florida oh it's so horrible to have the stock market closed at four o'clock you just wasted your whole day staring at charts and graphs and uh, I love getting it over with that's that's so sweet but um, yeah no I mean um, six six to one is plenty of time to get the work done yeah. and then I mean so my activities after one are still it's still work yeah it's just marketing time I'm switching from client management and appointments to just pure marketing and then when I get home oh and, and then I'll I will, I will get rid of this. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, so I get home, I have a, I have a part-time remote assistant. I'll just send her all my contact notes, and she puts it in the spreadsheet for me. And then I write a thank you note to every single person that I talk to and throw it in the mailbox. And it just says, Dear, dear Mike, you know, thank you for... Uh, Thank you for allowing me to introduce myself and my firm to you. I appreciate the time you gave me. When I may be of service to you and your family, please let me know. Just throw it in the mail. So now they have a business card. They have a nice, a nice thank you note. And then I prefer, rather than cold calling or emailing people again, like I hate email. I'm, just so, I'm so over email. I will literally just keep going back to my top prospects over and over and over and giving them like a newsletter, a newsletter, a newsletter, a newsletter in person. And the newsletter is what gives me the reason to stop by. Say, hey, I just wanted to stop by and give you my newsletter. Is there anything I can do for you this month? No? Okay. Well, have a great day. Nice talking to you. And so you're just giving, 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 giving. You have a giving spirit. and. Um, and so rather than just showing up on their doorstep trying to sell them all the time, I'm just saying, hey, is there anything that I can do for you? And not say, hey, I've got this great stock you should buy. Help us some NVIDIA. It's only up like 1,000%. Yeah, yeah just, just a funny little, little joke there. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, um, Isaac, the sushi sensei, told me, you have a lot of gifts. You're a really cool guy. You got all these things going on: astronomy, photography, DJ stuff. He's like, do cool stuff and invite people to be part of your fun stuff, and they will like you and they will want to do business with you because of who you are. So use all of these fun things. Don't just sell your financial practice. Sell all the, all the neat things that make you who you are. So, I'll leave it at that. So, but yeah, I mean. My, I, I hear Pinkerton's not, not all that. He just has a kick-ass building with a museum. Thank and you for coming it, to my TED Talk is basically what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> and he can play the violin, which I, uh, I tried to do once, but. That's right. Do you, that was good. 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I'm the king of door knocking. If you ever want to talk, let me know. I just uh, It's a gift that God gave me, and I'm, I'm not going to waste it. God, um, Proverbs 3 says if you... Don't, if somebody comes to you and says, hey, can, I, can you help me? Just don't tell them to come back another day. And so I just like, you know what? That's me. It's like, if you come to me and want help, I'll help you or find someone who can. And so I, uh, I keep all of you in my mind when I'm out talking to people, and I tell people I'm a toolbox. And I'm often saying, do you I'm need... Your tools. I say, that's right. He's kind of I say, so yeah, in the last two weeks, I found people that need a will or a trust uh, or a trust updated or whatever. Um, it's like, oh, I you know I have attorneys. I'll send you their names. I know somebody who does Medicare uh, supplement plans and stuff like that. So I'm not just looking for myself. I'm looking for all of you. So um I want to find something that this person needs and solve that problem so that they can, they can be thankful and grateful and go, wow, thanks for introducing me to that person. What's your name? Michael Christensen. Michael Christensen. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to have your card. Thanks. Well, all right. we'll all see him at 1 o'clock tomorrow at his house. Yeah, we're, we're, that's right. Carol, Caroling practice. All right, yeah. That's right. So we'll work on that. We'll have a little... Uh, a little uh, caroling band will go around and and uh, sing songs to the yeah, neighborhood. Right. But, uh, I've done that. All right, uh, yeah. If you if you if if we ever do want to do a uh, a crowd, what do you call it? The the flash mob, part of business flash mob. I'll I'll help out. All right. Thank you. I guess it's time to go. Okay, that was our day. Yeah. Who wants to top that? Yeah. Good luck, yeah. next person. <laughs> Well, I think Mike was able to get everybody's real creative juices flowing, right? Um, you know, he was talking about just good, the obstacle, right? But we all, door knocking isn't an easy thing, you know? Um, Mike might have a gift at it, but also, I'm 100% I'm sure that the first time that he did it, he wasn't super confident either, and he ran into a lot of jerks and things like that. I'll tell you about day one. Yeah, I walked, I grabbed a Starbucks coffee. I waited for the last possible minute because I was dreading it so much. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. This is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I'm like, I was broke and I, I crawled away from Merrill Lynch, like almost a failure. Uh, but I knew I, I didn't fail. I started at the peak of the dot com bubble. Yeah. And for three years, I lost people money. And so that first day of door knocking, I grabbed a Starbucks coffee, waited until the last minute. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this, or otherwise I'm going to get fired. And I picked the first street by my office, and I just started knocking. First door wasn't home. I'm like, oh, my heart was racing. Second door, not home. Oh, and I think the third door was home, and we had a nice chat. But the first day was fine, and the second day went fine. And then after a while, I'm like, this isn't so bad. And then the accounts started rolling in. $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, $400,000. And then after like a year, two years, whatever, I'm taking my wife to Venice, to Rome, to Hawaii. I'm like, I freaking can do this stuff. <laughs> this is so cool. And I just, I, I, I saw the results and I just kept doing it because it was working. And you know, I, so yeah, the first day is what I'm saying. The first day was terrifying, and uh, but it took about a month to hit my stride and find out kind of how I wanted to approach it. Yeah. Uh, so constant improvement, right? Just reiteration of doing it. So there's there's a, a guy that I've been listening to a lot uh, called Nicholas Crown. And he actually has like two sides. So he has the, the, the real important stuff that he talks about, but he also has these jokes that you can find on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and they're called the rich person versus the really rich person. And the rich person is like a jerk, right? He comes in and he tells the valet, hey, punk, don't scratch it, right? And then the really rich guy's like, yeah, man, just take the keys, don't worry about it, here's a 20, that sort of thing. And the idea is that the really rich person is putting in the hard work, but they're also caring about the people around them, right? And they're not really rich because they have a ton of money. Well, they do, but they're really rich because of the relationships and the things that they've done. Um, so I think that that's just a really good example of where, where we can all take into our business, right? Um, we all have different goals. We all have different, I, I, you know, most of us are in some sort of sales or something like that. And 
we do, I, I totally relate to that, right? I grabbed a Starbucks coffee and I waited until the last minute of the day and then I finally did it, right? Um, but every time that I've ever decided, hey, I'm gonna call 10 people or I'm gonna go knock on doors or I'm gonna go do the hard thing, by the end of it, I was better for it, I enjoyed it, um, and, and I had made something out of it. Uh, so I think that was really good, Mike. Um, does, does anybody have any other subjects that they wanna talk about? Or I was just thinking that, you know, if you go out with the mindset that in order to get the one, you have to talk to the 10, it makes it easier because you know you're going to get one out of 10 or one out of 25 or whatever the numbers may be. But for me, mentally, I'm like, I'm okay knowing I have to do this many because there's going to be a positive result. And it might not be today. It might be in a month or whatever. But I like the concept of the seed planting and just keeping the pipeline full. Right. And then the results will come. It really is. Sales is really just a numbers game when it, when it boils down to it. Well, and it's yeah. also doing like what Mike suggested, which is not having mission breath, right? It's yeah. uh, brushing yeah. your teeth before you go out, which means that you're going to, you're going to think specifically, I'm, I'm out here to build relationships. I'm yeah. out here to meet people, just like Mike says. Yeah. I'm not here just to sell you something in my first, even though I, I definitely want to let you know, I don't want to be a, um, a, what do they call it? A, like a ninja financial advisor or a secret financial advisor, right? Everybody should know that I'm a financial advisor, but everybody doesn't need to, you know, like to say, do you this stock, this bond, gold, silver, Bitcoin, right? right. That sort of thing, yeah. life insurance. Um, so I, I think that, that was really great. Yeah, I think about the people that have come to my door since we've moved to Post Falls, and the only people that have come to my door is pest inspection, people that you know wanna do your pest control, pest control, not inspection, yeah. pest control, and solar. That's it, if oh. someone like you came to my door, I yeah. would be amazed, because yeah. people are just, they're just not doing it. So well, let's I give credit to the Jehovah's Witnesses, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have not got them. And the Mormons? <laughs> and the Mormons. Well, no, right, no right now is, is actually a really powerful time for door knocking because it's actually more polarizing than it's ever been before. Um, one of the things about it is is we're post-COVID, right? And so yeah. there are still those people out there who, like, you knock on their door and they're going to be like, what are you doing, Satan? Right? Like, this is my door. Don't come to my house. But then there's going to be a large majority of people who are like, people yeah. they're like i can't believe somebody's at my door you're not wearing a mask and you're a regular person right yeah. this yeah. isn't a video conference right now this yeah. isn't a phone call yeah here's a tip leave your car running and you'll end up with like a 30 minute conversation <laughs> i like that yeah it always happens i'm like yeah. it's 104 degrees out i can hear my car and the fan whirring and the guy is like telling you know, talking and talking and talking i'm like why does this always happen on a hot day when my car is running like, yeah. luckily my car doesn't overheat but it is funny how often that happens like and so yeah there are people who miss physical uh, conversation face to face yep. yeah. and you'd be surprised how many people talk to me for 10 or 15 minutes on their doorstep about yep. everything uh, yeah. their small intestine was removed and <laughs> they, they were they died on the on the table and they woke up and they had a sheet over their face and they gasped for breath and the nurse was horrified and <laughs> wow. now they're asking for prayer because their abdomen hurts so bad my, oh my gosh. And it's like, I, I tell you, I actually just a couple weeks ago, I went to review this lady's insurance policy. Her, her uh, other agent had passed away, so I took over the policy, right? I go to her house, and she wanted to talk about anything but that. She actually yeah. told me the story of how her husband passed away, Whoa. was in a box, right? Was like they were, hadn't buried him yet, and she had dreams that he was still alive. Oh. And then she had the coroner go to like go and go check it out, and she was like, yeah, he was alive for a couple days. Whoa. Wow. Right, with like a, a really low heartbeat, and they couldn't even tell with normal equipment and stuff like that. Wow. And I'm like, I just want to know, do you want to like change your policy? Or <laughs> But that's exactly what happens is they will talk to you about anything, wow. right? Yep. Yeah. Well, what was crazy for me was uh, yeah. my wife and I attended a, a leadership uh, conference a few years ago in California, and they uh, they put a piece of paper in front of you and they said, draw all the houses on your block. And my wife's like putting trees in and making it colorful and making it 3D, <laughs> and I'm doing stick figures. Square and, uh, so, you know, that we thought that was the project, right? But the project was, now list the names of all your neighbors. And 
like 90% of the group can maybe list the name of their next door neighbor or their neighbor across the street, right? So um, that was kind of, you know, the whole thing was, you know, go home and get to know your neighbors. Well, once we moved up here, you know, I was making more of a conscious effort to get to know my neighbors, but I literally would go to take the trash cans out to the curb, and I'd come back in 45 minutes later, my wife would be like, trash, 45 minutes? And I'd be like, yeah, Bill saw me, Bill came over, and then Dorothy Bill. came over, and then, and right, it turns into this whole thing. And so what I'm telling myself in all of these encounters is to not be the first one to end the conversation. But because I'm not the first one to end the conversation, it goes on for like 45 minutes. It just goes and yep. goes and goes yeah. in really weird areas, you know? But you're right, people are craving just to have some some human interactions. It's yeah. actually the more we're tied to our devices, the more we're sucked into our constraints. Like Lynn, every time I see her, she's on her device. <laughs> <laughs> well, every time I talk to you, you end the conversation before I do. Well, <laughs> oh, that was good. Snap.